Hey everyone, welcome to our Warrior Babe interview with our veteran Warrior Babe, Jill. Jill has been a Warrior Babe for seven months now, started at 177 pounds and you're 5'7", 47 years old, and now is at 156 pounds. That's a 21 pound drop. And Jill, you are looking hot. <laughs> you are looking hot. <laughs> Um, your transformation has been insanely incredible. You literally came into Warrior Babe and you just started putting in work. You you have it just like head down, focus, doing it. So everyone, Jill is here to share some pointers for you, babe, so that you can adopt some of her strategies to your own journey moving forward. So welcome, Jill. I'm excited to have you here. Thank you. So excited to be here. Yes. So tell these warrior babes and anybody, anybody that's listening, tell them your story and how you got to where you are now. Yeah. So I have, I've always been active my whole life, like danced, I, gymnastics, cheerleading, the whole nine yards. And even after I had babies, I did weight programs and got my, all my weight back. And then the forties hit and I did get mono. <laughs> early that year, which I feel like that kind of affected a lot of my energy. And then I just kind of went downhill from there. So I started trying to just do what I could to get by and it just never was enough. So then I went down the Instagram, social media route where don't eat this, keto this, gluten-free this, dairy that. And I knew being a nurse that cutting food out wasn't necessarily the answer. So, and I also knew that weights worked for me. So I just needed to get back to the basics. I wanted to be eating healthy because I was eating clean. I was eating salads and just every cutting everything out that was supposed to be bad for me. And I'm like, I just know that there's a certain amount I should be eating and don't cut any foods out because I had had all the tests. I had allergy tests, not dairy. I'm not, I know dairy upsets my stomach, but like gluten, all of those things, I didn't have to cut those out. Mm -hmm. um so then I found you <laughs> and I just read all those testimonials about the amounts of food people should be eating and right for their bodies and weight training and I knew that that was what worked, was going to work for me so once I I, I started with uh, the um, blueprint which was a great introduction and I really did put myself into that but I still didn't feel like trusting myself that I could tweak the the process so I just wanted to I wanted to know, like, <laughs> it was so annoying that I didn't know. And so, and it was so simple once I did learn. That's the crazy thing. So, cause I'm willing, I was like, I'll eat whatever I have to eat just to be able to have the weight training work for my body because it wasn't like it used to. So back in the day, I could just weight train and eat whatever, you know, pretty clean, but then the forties hit. <laughs> that didn't work anymore. So once I got my energy level up and, you know, I got some vitamins right in my body that were a little bit deficient, um, that did help with my energy, but mostly just the desire to know how to, how to fix it yeah. was what, and then once I put my mind to it, I'm like, I'm going to just trust the process. And that's exactly what I did. So. So in you, I know you started with keto, right? You were doing keto before you initially joined Warrior Bay, right? No, I mean, I tried keto and I just, I felt horrible. The one thing that I was really trying was intermittent fasting. And I finally ended up going to see um, integrative medicine just to like talk to them about hormones and stuff. And he's like, it's the worst thing you could possibly do for your hormones at your age is to like go this extended time. And my cortisol level was high and I was sleeping bad, waking up in the middle of the night. And I honestly did not feel like that was right for my body. I would just push through and I would feel like my blood sugar dropping. I felt horrible. So yeah, that was the big thing that I did not like that I was trying to do. And I kind of felt like, you know, your stomach would be flatter or you, I did get a little boost of energy here and there, but overall, no, <laughs> like not, not enough of the right foods for sure. Yeah, and we'll talk about the psychology, psychological side of like eating more food because I'm curious to know what you were eating like before you joined Warrior Babe and then when you joined Warrior Babe and like where we placed you at. Um, that we'll talk about that in a minute, but yeah, your, your, your entire from where you were to like where you are now, it's it's the, the transformation that you, I mean, like, I 
personally go in to, to see your stats and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Our body keeps dropping. Um, yeah. So it's incredible. So how, how are you handling right now uh, this farm? The food? Yeah, the this like being, being. Well, I know you're you're you still work because you're an essential worker as being a nurse. But like, how are you still? I mean, you and you work out from home. So, like, how are you yeah. still handling? Like, how are you still handling quarantine Personally, and fitness and the nutrition side? I just feel like I was sad when the gym closed because I had a really good routine going since January when I started. And I would go get my workout done and they got fresh towels and air conditioning and the whole, you know, and then I was like, oh, this is going to stink. Cause my husband did work out in the garage a lot. Um, but back in the day I did do that. I did P90 in the garage in the heat with little babies there. Right. So that was my big thing. And I knew I could do it. And then I just was, then I started to get excited because I didn't have to get ready to go anywhere. I could just literally throw my workout clothes on anytime, go out there. So I actually saw it as a big opportunity. I'm like, I don't have to travel kids with sports that I was supposed to be doing all summer. Like I was supposed to be gone like every weekend. And so that was kind of stressing me out. Where, how am I going to work out? So I don't know. I just found it like I have two hours in my day to work out and just basically pan little foods. I don't make big, big elaborate meals. So I don't know. I was excited actually at the end to work out because I saw me getting on a really good routine without the distraction of having to go places. Yes. So 100%. there's more, you feel like there's more time right now because like the kiddos aren't in school. school. Yeah. I mean, my kids are pretty self-sufficient at this point, but I, you know, I always felt guilty taking time away and leaving and doing something for myself. But then I was like, you know what? They're on their phones or they're playing games or they're with their friends. I'm like, and I'm literally would just make excuses. I'm on my phone. I had to clean, I had this, I had that. And really, that's what it comes down to. You have to be like, stop making excuses. And this two hours is spent for me. And I just had to get selfish a little bit about it, which nobody saw it that way except me. My family was like happy that I was doing that. Um, but yeah, that was mentality wise. I was just, I had to get excited about doing it. And yeah. for the most part, like I, I, it's just part of my day now. I don't, I, I schedule things around my workout instead of my workout around my things. I love that. That's a big thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing. That's awesome. So, and if I mismanage, I have to work out after working 12 hour shift because I do my five day workout regardless. So I really try to not do that. <laughs> Those are my two days off. <laughs> but I've been out there at nine, 10 at night doing it. So, wow. Yeah. Like I said, man, you just came in and you, did, you do the work. That's what it comes down to. And even through quarantine, it's not stopping you. How are you doing with the food during quarantine? Great. <laughs> like, it's just a routine now. And I mean, macros, I made them this big, you know, complicated thing in the beginning. And really, I once, I, once it clicked and then they graduated me, I was like, oh, I'm on my own. Like, that was kind of crazy because I was, I was making that so much more complicated than it was. So I've helped my friend and my sister-in-law really try to narrow it down. And I'm like, it's, you don't, you just have to keep it simple. That's the biggest, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Like exactly. don't overcomplicate. And it's not really these big meals. And she, you know, like they'll say, but I, they're eating out or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? You're not, I don't feel like you're having, you're missing out or you're, I don't know. Like, I feel like I get a cheat meal and on the weekends I tweak what I need when I want. And the rest of the week I'm eating for fuel. That's just how I see it. Yes. Functionality and fuel. Mm -hmm. Not really for the, like a lot of people correlate food to emotions and eat for comfort when it's really a shift to understand that your bodily processes, your cells, everything in order to achieve the results that you want of getting muscle or getting toned, like you got to look at it as fuel. Because if you don't look at it as well, then people don't eat, right? Like right. a lot of women struggle with not eating enough. Um, That's what I used to do. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because I, I love that you elaborated on, because um, a lot of women complicate macros in the beginning. Like they just get overwhelmed and kind of like toss out the door. But I'm like, I can't ever think of following something that's not macros. <laughs> I just yeah. 
I can't wrap my, my brain around following anything that's not macro oriented. Um, so let's talk about like, I appreciate you elaborating on that because a lot of women need to hear that. But let's talk about that psychological side of eating more. Like what were you doing before? And then like when you came into Warrior Babe, how did you deal with having to eat more food to get to the goal that you've achieved? Well, I feel like I did with the fasting, I tried to eat in the window, but then I felt like I was overeating because you're trying to like get it all in during the window. But I know that I'm not like a huge meat eater. So the protein, I probably wasn't eating enough protein and definitely way too many carbs. And then fats in your head, you feel like you need good fats. And so I was having too much avocado. I mean, based on what I know now, way too much avocado, way too much, I mean, maybe butter in my eggs and, and like full eggs. I ate real eggs, which now I'm an egg white person because I want to put my fats other places. So yeah, I mean, then I felt like some days I wouldn't eat barely anything. And then other days I would be starving, you know, it just depends on or you would have all your calories at dinner <laughs> kind of deal. Yes, yes. That was a big thing. So yeah. now I just feel so much better with my food just spaced out. And I'm not super anal about like, I mean, I know you're supposed to time it, but if I can't get it in or if I'm not having my workout till 10 or 11, that's probably my breakfast or pre-workout. So I kind of end up sometimes having them a little closer together, but I feel what I need to eat now. So that's huge. <laughs> yeah. And how did like, you deal with like coming into Warrior Baby and you're eating tons of food and all the carbs? Oh my gosh. I was it. so full the first, yeah, that was, that was hard. You had me eating and probably, I mean, coming out of Christmas, I felt like I was just eating, you know, candy and crap that I shouldn't have been eating to begin with. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got, I was full, really full eating that much food but and then I was starving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's another thing that a lot of women struggle with. They come in, they're like, yeah. they're doing that first like transition week, or they're getting the macros, they're trying to hit them, and they're just like, oh my God, I can't stuff one more thing in my mouth. And then all of a sudden, there's just this like switch that goes off. Mm -hmm. like, the metabolism starts rounding up, and then like people are like asking for that food back. Can you, yeah, can you like share more, elaborate more on I that? remember looking at my phone, like, did I switch the macros on accident? Because I was starving and I'm like, this can't, yeah. Like I felt like I had accidentally tweaked them the wrong way or something, but no, I was just, so yeah, I mean the up and down and I kind of met that 20 pound, that's where I wanted to be in six months kind of deal. That's was just like the initial goal. And and then you started adding some food and I, you know, I don't want to like gain weight back, but I do, I did feel like my muscles deflating just from being in the cut. So mm -hmm. I, I definitely can lift heavy. I mean, I'm lifting so much heavier now. It's crazy just from having more food, yes. but I've actually still been losing with all that food. Exactly. So. <laughs> so let's, let's talk yeah. about that too. The psychological part of eating is really good to talk with you about because you, you've gone through the cut, you reached your goal. Yet now you're, we're adding in more food and you're still dropping. So yeah, just share like your emotions, like how you felt with that. Did you expect this to still be happening? And like I did not expect to keep losing weight because I mean, I feel like, I mean, I'm, I'm at 190 carbs as of yesterday. So I just work out extra hard today. <laughs> I mean, I, I always do try to put my mind into it, but like, I definitely feel I feel so much stronger when I'm eating like that. It's crazy. Mm. So I'm just, I don't let it really affect my emotions too much just because I still trust you for what's happening. So mm. I can't, if I go back to my mind where I'm not supposed to eat this much or this food or then I'm going down the same rabbit hole. So I've actually gotten results with this and I don't plan on changing it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. But, just keep, keep yeah. going. I'm, yeah. I'm increasing your food and dropping that's <laughs> yeah everyone's dream right but you're the thing is is that you're just you're what I've noticed with you inside the program is like you're just like okay you know like you just do it right like you just put in the work there's no question to ask because I think yeah. the big, big thing is the trust like if you're getting the results why why question it like you, the results are happening things are working yeah. and, and you're meeting the belief your true north as being a nurse on what you know you need to be doing for your body right like, yeah, yeah and I know that I mean no one's going to do it for me so and you know you have those days especially like I've always noticed every time I'm about to get my period I have 
you bloat, you feel like you're gaining weight, you don't have energy. And I'm like, this isn't working. And then you stop. But now with this program, I, I still feel like tired and not as, you know, motivated, just whatever. I mean, I still go get it done. It might not. And I tell my sister-in-law this, I'm like, that might not be your best. You go out there and you do what you can, but at least in your head, like for me, it's like a mental thing. I cannot miss a day. I cannot mess up my macros because I don't want to feel bad the next day that I did that for a temporary little fix. So I don't know. I just, and then that next week, I'm stronger and leaner than ever just because I push through. It's crazy. Like, and I have so much more energy. So I totally know the week of my period, I'm going to feel this way. And next week I'm going to feel awesome. So that's huge. I'm but. so, I'm glad that you're, la you're, you're elaborating on exactly the points that women need to hear uh, with this interview, especially, I don't think I've ever talked about the PMS side or the period side, which is so great because you're right. Like, yes, you know, you're going to feel this way. And I think a lot of women get roped up in the emotion of like, they just, they, it's more of like a subconscious thing to just go in the kitchen and eat the chocolate to feel better. But you are kind of above it on the conscious side of things. And you're like, I know this is happening and I know I'm going to be fine next week. So why derail progress right now? Only to be almost hitting that, hitting the reset button mm -hmm. on the work that I've kind of put in the past like week or two. Right. Well, and if I have gone over on something, because I forgot to log it usually, if I, I mean, I've gotten a little more intuitive with it, but um, I, I just don't beat myself up about it. I'm like, just get up and do the next day. You can't hold on to that. And that's a huge thing I used to do. So I, I just let it go and keep going. Yeah. It's not been many days that I've gone over, <laughs> but I, oh. <laughs> I try to be really disciplined about it. Yeah. But, but what, how yeah. did you use to? I don't like that feeling that I've failed. I don't like that. Like I want, I don't there's no reason to not hit my macros because I'm going to have a fat cheeseburger tomorrow night. You know what I mean? Like that's, and I never feel good after I eat that big meal because I've had to meet all the macros all day, but it's just psychologically it's, you know, I know I have a day of, so I don't need to do that the rest of the week. Miss it. Exactly. How you don't yeah. turn it into one, like you have your meal, it's satiated, you hit your cravings, whatever you want it to have. And then you just, it's not, it doesn't turn into two days, three days, no, nope. one month. Just get right back and on, I, on the weekends, like I just make, I tweak, I mean, all the week I pretty much copy paste and hit my same, I mean, I'll, I'll tweak stuff here and there, but mostly dinners is the only thing that changes. But on the weekends, if I want to go have sushi, I fit that in. Like I, it's not that we don't go out and do things. I just fit it. So yeah, let's elaborate on that. You have a family, you have a husband, you have kids. Like how do you successfully still track your macros where you have a family? Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, I definitely do it the night before. That was a huge lesson early on. And if anybody can take anything from that, that is key because you cannot get up and go play as you go. It doesn't work, <laughs> nope. but I do, because I do try to keep things pretty consistent and I keep the same foods in the house that I know I can, I know how to meet my macros with those. So if they, the biggest thing is to find out what we're having for dinner. So, cause dinner is what changes every day. Um, and I'll, I ask ahead of time. My husband likes to cook. So I just ask ahead and I eat everything they eat. I just weigh it and know what I can have. The yeah. scale is your best friend. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Like I literally am this little tiny $10 scale that has changed my body. Like Isn't that because weigh, I, I didn't weigh like my protein powder. Like when you guys taught me that I, I just didn't realize that every little scoop, you know, it's way off. So it's a big deal. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Cause like, yeah. you know, a lot of women think that they're eating healthy and we'll kind of pull back on that, on that topic. Like a lot of people think that they're eating healthy. Yes. But like, you know, what's the actual amount of sweet potato that you're putting on your plate? What's the actual amount of chicken that you're putting on your plate? It could be like the, the actual consumption of what you eat and how much you eat throughout the day attributes to the, to the hitting the 190 carbs or whatever your protein and you know, the protein and the fats. Like a lot of women, think that there's a disconnect between like eating healthy and eating enough. And that yeah. scale helps you become aware of being like, wow, I was not eating yeah. anything near to what a whole salad was way past what, I mean, you're eating healthy, but you're, you shouldn't have that. And I'm full with what I'm eating. So that just tells me that my body has what it needs. Like I'm never, I'm never hungry after I eat any meal of the day. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm full, full from that one setting. So and I know another one's coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so maybe you can share on your awareness too. For a lot of women, they look at um, they look at tracking everything that they eat or weighing everything that they that they have to eat as like obsessive. What would your take be on that? Seeing what it's caught in you too right now, um, and how what can you share on like insight with that? I mean, if that's the one thing you have to do to get your goal, that's not hard at all. Yeah. Like once you learn how to use the scale and I just always have it there. And I know, and actually by eating kind of repetitive meals, like I have the same pre-workout eggs, oatmeal, you know, the same shake that I even weigh like my way, you know, all the powder and everything. I, are, I already know the numbers that I have to eat. 40 grams of oatmeal, 33 grams of protein. Like it's in my head already. So it just makes it so much more simple. But if that's all I had to do to get my goal, I'm, it's, it's not hard at all. <laughs> that yeah, is the yeah. easiest part. Yeah, absolutely. And when, when it's, it's way like, easier than working out. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that's actually a really good version of it. I told my, you know, where I was talking to my sister-in-law and she's like, oh, in the morning I have to weigh in. And I was like, you know what? Either do it the night before, but it literally takes a minute to weigh it. Like, yes, it feels kind of tedious if you're not used to doing it, but it's such a small amount of time for such a big gain. Like uh, you there's know, no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and honestly, it brings more of awareness to how, what you are actually fueling your body. Yeah. Me. And it does make you like when I go to a restaurant and I don't have my scale, I, I know what I can totally guesstimate like two ounces, three ounces of chicken. And like, I, I make it work. I don't need necessarily the scale anymore. I've done it so much now that you took the word yeah. in my mouth, man. I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> That's the good part. You learn portion sizes. It, counting macros, is not, it's not obsessive. I look at it as a skill that will serve you for the rest of your life. And you don't necessarily have to track macronutrients or like weigh shit out for the rest of your life, but A, it helps you be way more aware and B, it helps you learn what actual portion sizes are. Like you're saying, like you can go out to a restaurant and say like, you know, you, you want to fit it into your macronutrients. You just portion size or talk to the waiter and be like, Hey, don't put, don't cook my shit in butter and oil, you know? <laughs> yeah yeah now you're awesome. just very in tune to the fats the carbs and the protein of everything you eat literally like I, and I never and I knew those things I just didn't know how to apply it so yeah so and it's, to me it's way easier than starving yourself half the day or eating all fat all day like you, I had no energy at all I felt horrible on keto but mm -hmm. yeah and yeah, I didn't get results from that so <laughs> There's no way I could do keto and go out in that garage and do the, the workouts I'm doing. There's, you yeah. just don't have energy for that. No way. No way. Cause your muscles and water, water is a huge key to all of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> water could be talked about in a whole nother interview. <laughs> how many, how many, how much water are you drinking a day now? I usually drink about a gallon, gallon and a half. It just depends on my workout in the heat. Yeah. So. Absolutely. You living where you live, I would be gallon down in water like it's yeah. Now. <laughs> well, I have this little thing in my head, like in between every set, I take five big sips, and I'm done with a liter with my workout. So that's it's just, awesome. Play little head games with yourself. <laughs> exactly, that's what it comes down to. So many women. So this is the thing. So many women struggle with getting the water in. They struggle with with hitting their macros when they're first starting out, right? So, what are some pointers that you can give them in that realm? as to how to get more water and how to drink more and then how to, how to hit their macros when starting. Well, planning the night before is key, putting them in. And then I, in the beginning, I did really watch the time. Like I would, you know, try to work out or have my macros, like the, you know, space the meals out because then you weren't starving. If you tried to group them together, they, you would, would be really hungry by the end of the night. Mm -hmm. um, but the water for me, I mean, I've always been a big water drinker, but I, I would get up and drink literally half my liter. Like I have a 32 ounce and I would just drink half of it right when I got out of bed. And then pretty much the other half by the time I've had my coffee. So there's one down, one with my workout. And then I just, 
all day have, I have it with me all day. So it's, it wasn't really a chore for the water, especially when I'm working, it's a little bit of a chore, but <laughs> I, I still try to hit it. To see that. Yeah. How do you do it being on shift as a nurse? I keep a water bottle with me at the, at the desk all the time. So whenever I come out, I literally try to drink half of it. That's awesome. And I'm a really good snack. I kind of view them, my meals as snacks at work because I just, I have to go to the bathroom and I'll run and down my snack really fast. And because, you know, you, I, I'm a labor nurse, so you could be pushing with someone three hours and I'm like, I feel my blood sugar drop now. I just have someone come in and take, take over for a minute and I can down one meal in like two minutes. No problem. Yes. Yeah, so. Say that freaking louder. Please. Yeah. Because I literally like yeah. on the Q and A's and the revolution or in any of the Q and A's with the babes, the common thing that I hear is like, I'm too busy at work. And I'm like, dude, I was a nurse. I work with nurses. Like you can, you just food. have to bring simple food. You can't have a platter with your napkin and your fork and your knife. Yeah. And your, that's not the kind of food you eat. I eat cottage cheese, a sandwich real quick. Like, and I'm, I'm full. I bring pretzels and a sandwich, my cottage cheese yogurt my shake the shake you can down at the desk like that's so and then I, I make my breakfast every morning and eat that right before I go in so yeah you eat you I, just, yeah. Right before you go in, <laughs> a three hour mark until you know shit yep. just again and then you eat again and then you just you figure and at yeah. this point they all know that I have to eat so exactly. <laughs> they're, they're good. Yeah. yeah and how is your how is like your work uh performance like how is your like are you more on point you're not you know you yeah yeah my brain's way more clear I don't have like the up and down I used to live on coffee because if you're fasting until noon and you've been up since five you're starving and your brain is like not good yeah. so yeah I'm way and I do drink a lot less coffee because I'm eating and I'm drinking water so that was another huge revelation like I don't need that I was looking for energy that way instead of but now I don't need it. Sometimes I don't even feel like drinking coffee. It's crazy. And I am a coffee freak. <laughs> so. <What>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. You. That is awesome. So cool. But, All right. So yeah, it's, it's really, it's you, you, you don't bring like chicken, broccoli and rice to your shift. You bring snacks, you bring shit that's really easy for you to hit um, and down within two minutes. Seriously. Like and telling you, just asking, like, that's the thing. I think a lot of women are afraid to like, just be like, Hey, coworker, Hey guys, can you just watch my patients or cover my desk for like two minutes while I go and scarf down my food? Or yeah. I put it in the purse under the desk and I just keep eating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my bags are great. <laughs> um, so what, what is some advice that you could give someone who is just starting their fitness journey? So... I would say first do your research and learn what you need to know before you're starting. And then you got to trust a process. Like you can't jump around. You can't do this half heartedly. I remember I felt horrible when I first went to the gym because I've always been like in key workout clothes and, you know, wanted to be that person. And I was always fit. And then I was so embarrassed in my arms and just everything that I just put a big t-shirt on and I just didn't even look in the mirror. I put my head down and I just did the workouts, got on the elliptical and went home. And I just kept repeating that, following every single thing you told me. And then one day I was like, I can wear a tank top because my arms look better. <laughs> so, but like, I, if there's anything, like you just can't nitpick every day and every little roll and every little and soreness, you have to fight through a couple weeks of that. So it's just like, put your head down and do it. And you're going to, consistency is the only thing that's going to work. Like you can't, you can't, if you give up and you start, keep stop, start, stop, start, that's not going to work. So just every single day, plug at it. And then one day you'll be like, wow, my bag rolls are going away. That was like huge for me. <laughs> like, seriously, I was that was uh, the one thing and I knew that was going to be the last to go because you you said it was fat loss and I knew that I just you know the, it's the the spots that you want to go are going to be the last ones to go mm -hmm. but one day you're going to wake up and you'll be like clothes are falling off like it's so that's that's my advice I guess there yeah, <laughs> consistency and discipline because you're not going to feel like doing it every day 
Exactly. I mean, I mean, have you have you messed up, right? Have you have you? Oh yeah. Yeah, you hit rocks in the road. But what did you and do? There's plenty of days I don't feel like going to work out, but I know I'm gonna regret it if I don't. So I don't ever not do that for sure, unless I'm on my deathbed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I I've suffered from migraines my whole life and they're just literally I maybe have one a month now. It's so crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. That's awesome, babe. So those are some huge pointers. Consistency. So many women, Monday through Friday, great. Saturday, Sunday, off. Back on it, Monday through Friday. And then they're like, well, yeah. why am I not seeing results? Why don't, why do you think you're not seeing results, right? Consistency is really key. That's a great pointer. And I love the fact that you said, don't nitpick. Don't nitpick yourself. If you can't love yourself right now when you're starting this journey for yourself, you ain't going to love yourself when you reach the goal. You're not going to love, you're still going to be nitpicking at this point. So but that's why you need pictures. <laughs> yes. Yes. On a Crazy. Yeah. It's the worst thing ever in the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of women are like, I don't want to take pictures, but like, why are you starting this journey? Because of that picture, right? To change that. Yeah. Picture. And it kind of brings them to more conscious awareness too of like, wow, this is what I look like, right? I'm sure you felt that way, like, wow, I need to make a change. And this is why I'm making a change. Yeah. Yeah. So what does warrior babe mean to you? What does being a warrior babe mean to you? So I feel like it's I mean just being a part of a tribe of people who have the same goal. Like it, you know, you're not going to have this support or you're not going to hear it from everyone around you every day. Like this has to be something with inside you and the people who are within the Warrior Bay community have that same feeling and goal. Like, and so to hear their struggles and their, you know, successes too, to watch everyone succeed is huge because there's not many places you can go and, and get that positive affirmation. So I, that's what I love about it. I know I can go somewhere and get and look at that and scroll through pictures and hear people's struggles, hear people's successes. And I feel better because like, you're just with, it's in within you sitting here. Like your kids aren't going to tell you, I mean, my kids have noticed that I've lost weight and that I'm getting stronger, but you're not going to hear it every single day. Right. Yeah. Like one of my biggest goals was to wear shorts again. I hadn't worn shorts in like four years. And one day I walked out of my room in shorts and literally my whole house noticed that I was, my husband was like, are you wearing shorts? I'm like, yes, I have leg muscles. <laughs> so he noticed that like big time, but yeah, I mean, that's where, that's what, that's what I love about it. And then if I have a question or, you know, you're always kind of, you, you don't want to feel like you're in the dark and not you, and especially when you're beginning. You don't really understand the macros so great. You don't understand the workouts. And then there's always someone you can ask and lean on that way. So that's been huge. Yeah. You yeah. Still there you, about talking about the support side of things. It's so true. It's like you, you go into the communities and you're just seeing other women who are like-minded like you working towards the same goals. But one day one pops into the group and they're like, I fucked up or I'm experiencing this and you're just, and everybody, I, those are the ones that I, I like see. And then there's like 50 comments underneath it of it. I'm just like, this, it's such yeah. a supportive atmosphere when you have like-minded women around you or, or, you know, virtually who are working towards the same goals, it kind of gets you to wake up every day. And you're just like, I know that there's another warrior, babe, especially in Texas, you know, there's tons of you guys down there. Um, I know there's somebody that's, you know, here working out, doing the same thing, hitting their macros. So it just helps you to show up even more, which is so cool. Yeah. And especially when you see them, they're, you know, before and after their muscles that they're able, you know, after they work so hard, it's like, I want those. Yeah. <laughs> or I have those. Like, it's yeah, so exactly. And then you're, you're inspiring. So, cause I know you've inspired yeah. so many women and they're like looking at your before and after and they're like, damn. And that just motiv motivates them. So you're inspiring them and you're, you're inspired by them. So that's, what's so cool. About it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, so let's, let's close this out with, uh, your, your favorite snack or your favorite macro combo. So like, I'm pretty simple, <laughs> but, um, I really like, I make this sandwich. I love sandwiches and I would always like not get sandwiches cause there was bread. Right. So I used to use the Dave's bread, thin bread. Um, 
Dave's Pillar Bread, and then I put a, a, a wedge of Laughing Cow Light Cheese, like the, mm -hmm. I spread that on the bread, and then turkey, and a little bit of mustard, and then I grill it, and it's like a grilled cheese sandwich. It's so good, and it's like perfect. Oh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> oh my god, I need to try this out. No, I just use a little bit of like non-fat spray, and it gets crunchy. Like, yeah, it's so good. So it's oh. like grilled cheese. <laughs> but you have turkey in it. So I use the Applegate turkey. It's organic and good. So, yeah. I need to That's try that. And then all American butter and chocolate rice cakes are my go-to at night. <laughs> That's my dessert. Well, you're all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my well, mailbox. They just delivered it. Did they really? That's awesome. <laughs> you got more. Oh, uh, great. I'm going to have to try out that, that uh, Dave's Killer Bread, go, the laughing cow and some turkey. Oh, that sounds so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Yes. All right. So, and then what's your favorite muscle group to work out? Um, I think shoulders and back. Those are like my two go-tos. I mean, I like legs. It's just it's so... <laughs> That shift. Heart, like I looked at my heart rate the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm 165 and I was just doing squats or something, you know, but yeah, my, I, I love legs. It's just, it, I am exhausted after leg day for sure. So, yeah. and yeah. I feel like some of them, I get a little like, you know, it's the heat. I think that's really affecting me right now. <laughs> I do miss the leg press and things at the gym that I used to be able to do, but I've made it work. We have, we have at least a squat rack. So it's good. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. A squat rack sounds so nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. A lot of worry about your face shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't lift like... in the beginning at all because I felt like I, I, it was, you know, you can't really lift very heavy with shoulders. So it was a struggle, but once you start seeing your traps and your results come in, then that's nice to you get the pump. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh, I love it. All right, guys. So for those of you who want to learn more about the programs that Worry Babe offers and how to get started, check out www.worrybabe.com and become a part of thousands of women just like Jill and just like all of the other women we're talking about that are inside this program who are getting toned and becoming stronger, more confident versions of themselves. Thank you, Jill, for your time today. You dropped some serious golden nuggets, some serious bombs that will help these babes. You, you expanded on so many things that women are struggling with. So I appreciate it. Good. Thank you. Yep. All right. Bye, everybody.